I rise today not to speak about an issue that divides this chamber, but rather one that should unite us, one that does unite us, and that is the care of those who have served and sacrificed for our nation, America's veterans. Today, I take great pride in the fact that uh, I've worked across the aisle to introduce bipartisan VA reform legislation, the Jason Simkowski Memorial Opioid Safety Act. I'm pleased to be joined in offering this legislation by my friend and colleague, Senator Capito of West Virginia. This legislation is aimed at addressing the problem of overprescribing practices at the VA and providing safer and more effective pain management services to our nation's veterans. It's named in honor of a Wisconsin veteran, U.S. Marine veteran Jason Simkowski. On August 30th, 2014, Jason tragically died at Wisconsin's Toma Veterans Affairs Medical Center. It was a result of what was medically deemed mixed drug toxicity. I call this a failure to serve someone who has faithfully served our country. At the time of his death at the VA, Jason was on 14 different prescription drugs. Yet this Marine's heartbreaking story is just one example of the overprescribing problem at the VA. After two decade-long wars, a large number of our service members are coming home with the damage of combat, and our veterans and their families are facing the difficult challenge of physical injuries, PTSD, and other mental illnesses. Unfortunately, I believe the VA's over-reliance on powerful and highly addicting opioids has resulted in getting our veterans hooked rather than getting them help. Jason's story is a tragic example of the devastation caused by addiction, addiction whose roots are regrettably at the VA. To me, overprescription of opioids at the VA is a root problem, and it is growing into a weed, a weed of addiction whose impact is being felt beyond the walls of VA facilities. The ripples are indeed being felt across America in communities we work for every day when we're here in our nation's capital. Our families, the families that we have the responsibility to represent, those families of those who have bravely served our country, are struggling with the loss of a son or a daughter, a father or a mother, a sister or brother to addiction whose root is planted within the VA system. It's our job to make sure they do not feel alone, and I believe that we have a shared responsibility to do everything we can to pull this weed out by its roots. Jason's family is in Washington today, and I am so honored to have worked with them and others in putting these reforms together to provide the VA with the tools it needs to help prevent this type of tragedy from occurring to other veterans and to other veterans' families. I want to thank the Simkowski family and let them know that I have a tremendous amount of respect for the courage that they have shown in telling their story and Jason's story and working to make a difference in the lives of other veterans and their families. Their story is one of a sacred trust that we must have with our veterans and their families. It's a story of how that trust has been broken, and it's a tragic story of loss. My message to my colleagues comes from Jason's widow, Heather. Heather, who has said, and I quote, when I look back at the past, I want to know that we made a difference. I want to believe that we have leaders in our country who care, and I want to inspire others to never give up because change is possible. 
Her words have inspired me, and it is my hope they will inspire my colleagues to join us in taking action. I hope I speak for all of us when I say that there is no room for politics when it comes to ensuring that our nation's veterans receive the timely, safe, and highest quality care that they have earned. Our legislation takes steps to give veterans and their families a stronger voice in their care by strengthening opioid prescribing guidelines and other measures. It also works to improve coordination and communication throughout the VA and puts in place stronger oversight and accountability for the quality of care that we're providing our veterans. Our goal is simple. Put these bipartisan reforms in place to prevent tragedies like Jason's from occurring to other veterans and their families. I'd like to thank and recognize Senators Blumenthal, Brown, Hirono, Johnson, Kane, Manchin, Markey, Moran, Murray, Sanders, and Tester for joining Senator Capito and I as in signing on as original co-sponsors of this bipartisan effort. And I'd also like to thank the many veteran service organizations and medical professionals for their invaluable support, insight, and input as we crafted this legislation. Today, I ask the rest of my colleagues to join us in working to confront the problems of over-prescribing practices at the VA and to provide more safe and effective pain management services to our nation's veterans. Let us work together to fix what has been broken and to restore that sacred trust with our veterans and their families. Let us work together to give our veterans and their families a voice, a voice that's heard, respected, and recognized. And let us be inspired by that voice to take bipartisan action on solutions to prevent these problems and tragedies from ever happening again, and to provide our veterans and their families with the care that they have earned and the care that they deserve.